podcast with me Carly. Hope you are all well witches. So a massive theme for me at the moment is focusing on how many weeks there are left in 2022 and what I can do with them to set myself up for 2023. I know I've bored many of you now we talk of my other love aside from witchcraft which is weightlifting which in my mind is still going epically. So I don't have many people to tell this story to, so I'm going to tell it to you if that's okay. I've been really consistent with this from when I started and I had a really proud muscle mummy moment the other day in a PT session where I lifted some really heavy weights and my PT and some other fellas at the gym gave me a huge pat on the back for how heavy the weights I was lifting were In that moment, I was so proud, not because of the number, but because due to just sheer consistency, I had achieved so much that no one expected me to be able to lift that yet. I wanted to delve into this on the podcast, not weightlifting, but some episodes around intentions and energy that relate heavily to the craft. And I really believe they do. So today we are looking at the three cauldrons, which focuses on our life energy. And if we took time to apply these different concepts to our own life, it could have huge impact on our mental, physical, emotional and spiritual well-being. On that note, I wanted to recommend a few books before we get to 2023 that have been integral to my own development. So more of spirituality type books. This book is a real blend of all. One that my grandma recommended to my mum who recommended it to me and I have read it plenty of times since. So the book is Health Revolution written by Maria Borelius. Finding Happiness and Health Through an Anti-Inflammatory Lifestyle. This is such a wonderfully written book of Maria's journey starting in 2013 at New Year. I really like Maria. I've listened to her podcast, which was only out briefly, but she has a wonderful way about her. Here is the blurb for her book. This is the incredible story of one woman's unique four-year quest to banish depression and fatigue, boost her energy and live a healthier, happier life. Feeling worn out and unhealthy, science journalist Maria Borelius embarked on a personal voyage to discover the benefits of an anti-inflammatory lifestyle and the results were extraordinary. Bringing together groundbreaking research from across the globe, the ancient wisdom of Ayurveda and a lifetime of experimentation, This book presents a simple five-step plan to transform body and mind. Through delicious recipes, lifestyle tips, and Maria's own journey, Health Revolution is all you need for a stronger, happier, healthier you. Again, this book was so amazing. Three generations of women in my family embraced it. This book doesn't mention in the blurb enough of the spiritual side it talks about that really was a game changer for me. I had some really deep aha moments following her journey that made me quite emotional. This has changed how I eat to this day. I'm a million miles away from how I used to eat. I enjoy how I eat today so much more than I ever have. Even if, you know, I'm someone who will eat a shit ton of salad, only providing I can lace it with sweet chili sauce. Does it mean it gets in my system? Yes, there you go. A win is a win. Mission accomplished. But I eat well. And this book literally set me out on this journey. This book was so far from being patronizing or making you feel crap about how you currently eat, which I find can be really triggering for me. 
yes, she definitely started out much more healthy than I was and probably am today, but it is not a book that's discouraging. It blends the spiritual in with so much of her journey with chapters titled Or Bliss peace and roots that explore these themes. This book well and truly looks into the mind aspect of our health journey, the mind often being the hardest to convince when it comes to any change. Did I implement most of the things in the book? No. Did I implement a few of them? Yes. Did they change my life? Yes. I began to understand so much more about what my body disliked, what to avoid, why my body reacted to certain foods as such. I understood far more about the more primal ways we used to eat and how I can incorporate that into my lifestyle. And as the years have passed since reading this, I can say that it lit a tiny fire that has grown and grown. Now I'm a weightlifter who is very conscious of what I eat. Do I still eat shit? Yes, definitely from time to time. And I don't feel guilty about it either. It is balance. I love that I now identify as that, but yes, I am. But yes, if there is one book I feel can inspire you to change your relationship with food, it could be this one. If not, I think you could just appreciate how wonderfully she writes and her journey. One of the most important parts of the book I read stated, researchers can demonstrate a connection between the degree of inflammation and depression, as well as between the degree of inflammation and the risk of suicide. This is serious stuff. This is just one small statement. The research throughout this book is incredible. I am someone who has the attention span of Homer Simpson. She breaks everything down into layman's terms so you can understand and relate to it. This book really goes deep into exploring exactly how our diet can impact us and if we change it, how it can change us. I changed many dietary habits because of this book and can absolutely say it changed in turn my mental and physical well-being. I'm about to read this for probably the fifth time now before the new year rolls in as there is lots I feel I could benefit from hearing again, putting into practice again other bits that I might have missed first time round. Perhaps you might like to read it too. Join me after the break to talk all about the free cauldron. Welcome back. So when I talked on the serpent episode, I mentioned briefly, I wasn't going to get into the chakras so much as they aren't an area I'm confident to discuss but it was because I really wanted to get into the free cauldrons. The free cauldrons are something I absolutely can get into, not to say that they are the Celtic version of the chakras in any sense, for they are not. The cauldron throughout Celtic tales has always been a coveted object of transformation and nourishment, Sometimes a quest needed to take place to obtain a specific cauldron. They were sought out, difficult to reach and held much mystery. Cauldrons were so highly regarded by the Celts, they were often left as offerings within lakes, rivers, bodies of water for the goddess. Dagda's cauldron, that made sure no one ever left unsatisfied, be it for food, healing, whatever was needed. Keridrin's cauldron is the quintessential witch's cauldron used to brew, distill and transform very carefully added herbs and ingredients to create a brew that would bestow wisdom. The cauldron of rebirth was given as a gift as written in the second branch of the Mabinogion to the Irish, who used it in a huge battle against the Welsh. They would throw their dead into the cauldron and they would be reborn, but unable to speak. The famous Gundestrat cauldron has a well-known image of Kenunus on it. 
the giant Hamir had a huge cauldron, supposedly a mile wide or so, that the Asir wanted to use to brew beer in. And Baba Yaga used a flying cauldron to travel across the skies. Metaphorically, cauldrons are associated with water, which is what they say 60% of the human body is made up of. Water is tied into life-giving and necessary thing in our life. Water is tied into rain, which feeds the crops, nourishes the land to grow and transform. The sea is teeming with life, which nourishes us and our ancestors as much as the crops do. Rivers connect towns and cities and helped push civilization forward. The Cauldrons of Poesy is a collection of prose and poetry found complete only in one manuscript. Some parts of it are found in other texts and it was supposedly originally from the first half of the 8th century. But the extant manuscripts date back to the 16th century. It is said this work could perhaps be an inheritance from the Druids in the 8th century. Some Druids were said to have studied around 20 years plus. It could have originated from the Philids, who were poet seers. Far from merely crafting words, they held otherworldly abilities, such as being seers with the ability to bless and curse. They took on some, but not all, the Druids' teachings. Around this time, Druids still had legal status. However, their influence was waning at this point in history. Some traditionally attribute the Cauldrons of Posey to an Irish philid known as Emir John Whiteney in the 7th century. What Amirjan describes in his writings is three locations within the body where energy is stored and gives a description of how these three cauldrons or energy centers can be used and strengthened through work and understanding. Through work, experiences or health, physical and mental, emotional, the cauldrons can turn depending upon what experience one has. At no point are the cauldrons location within us referenced. This is something that has come into interpretation in later years. Some argue we should be respectful of the druids or poets and allow their work to speak for itself. You might wish to meditate on where you believe these cauldrons are within your body. We can still be mindful of the original texts and still identify with the more latter-day concept of the positioning of the cauldrons while still honouring the Druids or the poet Seer's knowledge and wisdom. Druids believed there were three realms outside of us and that we held three cauldrons within us. The three cauldrons must be upright and full whilst the three realms are subject to constant interactions and exchanges. Each cauldron is considered a universe within itself. It demonstrates our relationship to our external environment, spirit, and also our ancestral inheritance, our shamanic otherworldly gifts, wisdom, emotion, vitality, and inspiration. So we are born with these three cauldrons that measure our physical well-being, our groundedness, our resilience, emotional depth, creativity and spirituality. Each cauldron has a role and place in our body and holds a specific energy that is key to our growth and development. The transformation and maintenance of our health, purpose and wisdom and the condition and contents of each cauldron reflects our current energy levels, health and connection to spirit. In our body, cauldrons are viewed as a symbol of the womb where life takes hold and creates a child. Our bladder is a holding vessel like a cauldron. So are our stomachs where food and liquid are taken and transformed into nutrients, which fuels the body. Our skulls are upside down cauldrons that shelter and protect our brains. 
Our lungs are like cauldrons in that they take oxygen and transmute it so the body can work with it and expels carbon dioxide from when the blood and body pass it on to them. There are probably more cauldrons one can imagine within one's body if we put our mind towards it. The three cauldrons are called the cauldron of warming, the cauldron of vocation and the cauldron of wisdom. The cauldron of warming, the actual original name is Kua Goriath. I could not find the pronunciation, but there you go. Sometimes it's translated to the cauldron of incubation or simmering. This is said to be located within the belly, low in the gut, where we feel things intuitively. The stomach has been said to be the second nervous system, the enteric nervous system, which can explain why we have feelings such as butterflies in our stomach or perhaps knots in our stomach when we feel nervous. This cauldron is said to indicate the body's overall well-being. It presides over your sense of being grounded, centered. It's our roots. It helps us feel safe, stable, endure, and it generates and sustains heat that maintains our physical life. This cauldron is said to be sustenance to the other two cauldrons. It is the physical foundation for the other two. This cauldron energetically symbolizes what keeps us alive, the essence of our vitality. Upon birth, this cauldron of warming is usually the only one upright, a sign of an individual's health only tipping over should an individual be in ill health or have a near-death experience. So this is a quote by Sean Padraig O'Donoghue from the website Otherworld Well. The cauldron of warming is the cauldron by which life enters the body, animating the flesh, setting us into motion, I associate it with our wild self, which experiences the world through sensation and emotion, and with the fire of the half that warms our bodies. It resides in the pelvic bowl. The essence poured into it is taken by the gods from the mysteries of the elemental abyss, a reminder that it is our own most primal nature that connects us with the ecstatic birth of the universe the emergence of cosmos from teeming chaos. The cauldron of warming is our earth connection. It reminds us we are of the earth. It also connects to our primal survival instincts and is a repository for our primal ancestral inheritance. So we can work on our cauldron of warming through attending to our physical health, which in turn serves our spiritual development. This can initially be through eating clean and healthy food, lots of water, intuitively focusing on what our body needs. No two bodies are the same. We can also do this through ancestral work, honoring our ancestors for their lineage of survival. Other ways you might wish to connect with this cauldron, I would definitely say would be through movement. So exercise or walks in nature, earthing and grounding would be ideal alongside eating really earthy foods such as root vegetables, perhaps homegrown vegetables or vegetables grown from where you live as they are more native to your homelands. I cannot recommend enough to add lots of spices to food that you're eating. This can be a form of spell work in itself. So I try to add lots of ginger, turmeric, cinnamon, nutmeg, chili, and so on into anything and everything I can. Anything fiery as the cauldron of warming is seen as the half igniting all the other cauldrons. Consider what we use many of these spices for in our spell work, often to heat and speed things up. So I like to make a lot of food from scratch this really quick. I don't have time to faff around. So I like to make lots of 
hearty, like spicy lentil curries or stir fries. So I know it sounds really twatty because old me would have just shoved a box of veggie burgers in the oven and be done with it. I know Nigella Lawson, but I have started to try to become more of a kitchen witch. I find it's cheaper for me now to do that. Now that I kind of know a bit more how to use spices, I enjoy the food more. I can make a banging stir fry, bitter bowls, curries. I get all those spices in it. I'm someone with a shit ton of fire energy. Let me bore you with my birth chart again. I'm like a Leo star sign, Leo star, Aries moon, Sagittarius rising. And I am best when working with my fire energy. But I also have to balance this out. And I find the best way I can do that is with earth energy, which is, of course, very heavily linked to the cauldron of warming. If I can balance out with being more connected to nature, being more present and so on, I am a better, calmer human being. And you might realize through considering these cauldrons, there is an element that you need to work with more. It may not relate to your birth chart at all, just in many respects, I do see myself as a person with a fiery energy burning. Now, I need to keep it burning like a healthy little half fire, not a forest fire or a tiny little whimpering flame struggling to stay alight if I'm not careful. But yes, the cauldron of warming, that consideration made me start to think more about balancing out that fiery energy with the earth element. So, the second cauldron, the cauldron of vocation, sometimes translated as cauldron of movement or yearning, this lives in the chest area. This cauldron is about being present, embracing who we are, being authentic, being passionate and driven by what you love, feeling alive and linking to our soul honoring what makes us sad, allowing what hurts to hurt, enjoying what brings us true joy and what has meaning to us. It is activated by what makes us sad or brings us true joy. Vocation isn't used in the career or work sense, but more the sense of our soul's deep yearning, our calling towards action we must take, our divine calling. This cauldron also relates to our universal relationship, our emotional and social health. So how we interact with people, animals, nature and things. Our conscious take on our own emotional responses and others, how we respond to all forms of emotion, filling and emptying this cauldron. It reminds us of our interconnection with others and that we are of the earthly and heavenly realms. The cauldron of poesy indicates for this cauldron the importance of reciprocity, generosity, flow and not hoarding. When we are born, the cauldron of vocation rests on its side, usually beginning to tilt once we begin to mature and experience the world. As tiny children, we really only experience happiness through getting what we want and sadness through not getting what we want. Experiencing the range of emotions between happiness and sorrow help to tilt the cauldron. More importantly, the better we can identify and understand our emotions and why we feel like this internally, the more our cauldron begins to upright. The Cauldrons of Posey states that sorrow and joy will turn the cauldron upright. This is why I urge myself and you to do shadow work, the uncovering, identifying and processing of these emotions from the past give us the tools to do this in the present and future and this helps us to experience so much more happiness and a better ability to experience sorrow when it arises. If we don't experience the full range of emotions between sorrow and happiness, this can mean this cauldron remains on its side. 
Again, these feelings range from sorrow through to longing, grief and jealousy, but also through to joy, feelings as a result of health, sexual intimacy, artistic or creative pursuits, and exploration and wisdom within artistic creation. Think of amazing artists who have created their best work as a result of sorrow or loss of love relationships. Sorrow connects us with one another as we can often share an experience of that feeling. Our hearts reach out to one another as a result and this has the power to strengthen our relationships but also our own personal empathy and compassion. Sexual intimacy is a physical joy as we are connected with another. Other joys relate to poetry within the actual cauldrons of poesy, but in modern day, we can apply this to anything that has a creative nature to it. So cooking, knitting, carving, anything. Although it is said the written and spoken word and visual arts have a more intense impact upon us all. The final division of joy the cauldron of poesy references in the cauldron of vocation is the discipline of pilgrimage to holy places. So another quote by Sean Pagdrake O'Donoghue from the website Otherworld Well. The cauldron of motion, which resides in the rib cage, corresponds to the talking self, which holds conscious intention and gives direction to our movement in the world. Whirlpools within that very cauldron can lead the mind to spin in circles without being able to engage the body to take in new information from the world, becoming stuck in an imagined perception of how things are based on past experience by returning awareness and sensation to the body. So this cauldron requires conscious relationships, reciprocity, balance, and healthy, mutually beneficial and respectful relationships. This cauldron cannot overflow amidst detrimental relationships or emotionally toxic environments. If we are withdrawn, our cauldron is said to be on its side. When we are connected and happy, we often want to share this with our friends, family and community. When we experience sorrow, we turn to them for support. When one of our people experiences happiness, this can in turn be infectious and experienced by us. If they are experiencing sorrow or loss, we can connect with them through the heart and demonstrate compassion and empathy. It's often said that when we lived more within communities, we could process trauma and loss much more easily as we all supported one another. Today, we are often more solitary beings, hence we often see more difficulties in us processing these experiences. When healthy, this cauldron seeks to harmonise our relationships, provide generosity and hospitality to others, whilst being aware of our dualities and polarities. Ancestral work we can do here is to honour our ancestors within the present, but also the very distant past. Our third cauldron, the cauldron of wisdom, sometimes referred to as the cauldron of knowledge, is said to reside within the head, our divine self. Upon birth, this cauldron is upside down, for we are born with no knowledge. We can turn this cauldron upright through learning, studying, working hard, practicing, understanding and growing. Should an individual be closed-minded, so unable to accept anything that challenges their beliefs or preconceptions, it is said their cauldron remains upside down. Analysis of the cauldron of poesy states it is through divine joy combined with human joys that we can connect the cauldron of vocation, so the cauldron in the chest area, and the cauldron of wisdom in the head area, which ultimately turns the cauldron of wisdom to an upright position. The cauldron of poesy describes four ways to connect with divine joy. 
They are through speaking prophetic poems, dispensing wisdom, performing miracles and offering wise judgments as well as giving precedence and wisdom, which was the role that the Druids of old fulfilled in Celtic society. And of course, these aren't necessarily ways we can connect with the four divine joys. However, we can work on the following for perhaps a same type of result. So anything within our craft that spiritually connects us, perhaps prayers, ritual, meditation, journeying, working with spirit, the gods, seeking wisdom and knowledge relating to our craft, following our witchy path as it takes us into different directions knowledge-wise, deepening our connection to nature, demonstrating gratitude, which in turn has an impact upon our mental, emotional and general health. So an overarching theme for all of the cauldrons is that the free cauldrons tie into a bigger Celtic spiritual view linking to the free realms. The cauldron of warming can be considered as the sea. The sea can be viewed as the depths of the source of water for humanity and the lower realm. Water to drink came from deep underground and brought up to the surface through springs or water is viewed as the oceans and seas that surround the land we inhabit. The Irish viewed the dead as sailing off to the west to join the ancestors In our bodies, our guts, instincts and the blood, our own internal sea, flowing through our veins, we've inherited from our direct ancestors is how we keep alive through food, drink and our blood distributing the nutrients throughout our body and helping wash away that which we don't need anymore. The land could link to the cauldron of vocation. The land is where nature surrounds us as the middle realm. We interact with the land daily and the inhabitants of it, both supernatural and mundane. Land is where the spirits of nature can be found and where we can encounter the fair folk as we cross liminal boundaries. We interact with our communities, friends, families and most of the external world in the realm of the land. In our bodies, our heart is how we connect with our outside world and the people we meet. And lastly, the sky could be connected to the cauldron of wisdom. The sky is the realm of the gods and the upper realm where we have to reach up to communicate with the deities we work with, excluding chthonic deities. It is where we can get divine inspiration and flashes of insight. In our bodies, our minds, our personal realm of sky, store our wisdom that we learn over the years and through experiences and knowledge gained. That is all I have for you today, witches. I know that is a lot of information. My brain is hurting. This research took me a long time. But if you want to bring more pages for all of this, you can find it over on the Witches Institute, which is our Patreon. For just £6 a month, you receive on the first of each month either a folklore tale, ghost story, or the story of a historical haunted or witchy location. For December, it is going to be all about the Pendle Witches. This month's was all about Merlin. We release four hedge witch studies per month with grimoire sheets and these are covering a power animal, crystal, plant and tree. Don't forget you can also catch me over on the Hedge Witches Almanac, another podcast that I host with Rachel the Hedge Witch. On the 15th of each month we post an exclusive Patreon podcast episode along with grimoire sheets You'll also receive Grimrush Sheets for the White Witch podcast. Our last Patreon podcast episode was all about Lemuria. We also have a pre-recorded online video workshop you can access on the 22nd of each month. That also comes with Grimoire pages. Our last one was on finding and working with your power animal. 
We have a meditation or shamanic journey that's delivered on the 28th of each month. This month's one is a Yule meditation. And we also have a monthly get together for the Sabbath or if the moon doesn't hold one for the full or new moon. This month, we have a Yule gathering on the 15th of December for Yule. We are going to be singing some pagan carols, which won't be serious in any form, but also just catching up and discussing our witchy plans. We also have the Literary Witches Coven. This is optional. Here is where we read a book together each month and have a meeting to discuss and share our reviews on it. For December, we are reading Old Magic of Christmas, Yuletide Traditions for the Darkest Days of the Year by author Linda Radish. We also have an amazing witchy community to interact with. Our Patreon has been running for over a year now. So if you join now, you'll have access to a ton of witchy content in our back catalogue. So another cheeky little request, if you enjoy the podcast, I would love it if you could give me a review over on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you listen to the show. I will catch up with you all soon, witches. Have a wonderful week. I'm sending you lots and lots of witchy love. <laughs>